Hello again YouTube, this is Robert Hopkins and today I'm broadcasting live from my garage with my steam powered bicycle. Now in this video I will talk about the parts of the bike and I'll talk about its um, what modifications I've made and a few misconceptions um, that I had since the last video and one or two of them were errors in the last video. Um, well first let me start off with the parts of the bike. So here we have the water tank and this is the air inlet so then when water goes out of the tank it doesn't just crunch the tank. Then this is the water pump inlet. It's the water pump. This is the engine. This is the bypass return, water bypass return. This is the water bypass. Uh, up here we have our fuel tank. Of course our pedals. Um, the pressure gauge. And on the, we have a, um, this handle, um, this lever raises the engine up off the wheel so then the engine can freewheel. I have this little Velcro strap so that can hold that up so when we're starting it, it's easy. Um, I've got speedometer, has temperature, um, which this bike's very useful because it, it can't run correctly under 50 degrees. Bell, I guess. Thought about putting a whistle, haven't gotten there yet. Um, this, this one's the throttle, so move this, move back there. And we have the boiler. Um, this thing's the boiler. This is the temperature control. Um, steam automatic, which the valve for it's up here. And I'll explain that later in the video. And we have our pilot and our main fuel in, for the burner. And here we have our throttle. So this is the actual throttle here. Spring for the throttle. Bypass up here. Now I've gone through all the parts, let me explain. Um, so, I mean, it's probably obvious, but... So basically the water comes from the tank up into here, goes, gets sucked into the water pump, then gets pumped over, around, back, down to here. And if the bypass up, and if the bypass up here is in this position, then this is open and path of breeze resistance is this way through the bypass back into the tank now if this is shut like that then the only place it can go is through this check valve which is a one-way check and then into the boiler so it coils around and then it comes out at, at the front here out here and then goes up to the to the here and uh, oh yeah something I forgot to mention this is this is a secondary steam automatic this is pressure based this one's temperature based and also coming off this line comes up to the the steam pressure gauge now um, so the steam goes if you open the throttle the steam goes through here and then into the engine and then once it gets used out the exhaust now I've had a couple misconceptions um, the first thing it runs at like around 250 psi uh, also the the interesting thing about how it runs is that when the bypass is down like this how the temperature control works so the boil so the temperature control works by so you turn this so you lift the valve out and so the valves this valve right now is pulled out and as you so as I turn this you pull the valve out and that lets fuel in um, but when the boiler heats up there's this bar across the boiler which I'm sure you noticed and this bar is attached at both ends so it's attached here and here to the boiler and these are hollow tubes 
So basically what happens is, is they expand differently. And what happens is, is this end will go down because this will flex, the middle will flex up because it's attached at both ends, has nowhere to else, what well, nothing else it can do. And so it will push this valve shut at around 660 degrees or 700 degrees or so. And so when you close the bypass up here, it pushes the cool water into the boiler, which cools it off, which starts up the burner again. Now, if you leave it open, uh, then it's not admitting cool water to the boiler, so the boiler stops making steam because it's already at up to temperature, which is quite ingenious, and it's actually the opposite of what every of a fire what a fire tube boiler does. Fire tube boiler, you put more water in, you have to, but it usually cools off the boiler. And it's sort of frustrating, but uh, yeah. And so. Um, another misconception when looking at the patents that are in with the bike um, the last patents 1973 and it recommends a model which an alternate engine on the bike um, was recommended from a popular science magazine which was published in July of 1975 so it couldn't have possibly be, been written more than a, a few year, a year or two before his actual death in 1977. Why there aren't really many of these? I'm sure they would have built a couple more if, if he would have been around longer. But um, yeah, um, another thing. Okay, so modifications. So I I changed out the spring from the original spring because the throttle valve was leaking, which normally wouldn't be a problem but in this case it, it actually is a big issue because you're you wasting a lot of steam because and I have a very small water tank besides the speedometer there's not really anything I've changed um, stats on the performance that I've gotten so far include it probably has a range of about 10 miles or so for one gallon of water um, we were running it the other weekend, and we rode it around for about an hour um, up and down my street before it ran out of water. And if if I kept moving, it would have wouldn't have leaked so much steam. It would have. And so, uh, how much you stop is really depends on how efficient it works. Now, for fuel, it probably gets about the same amount of time. It probably gets about an hour on a fuel tank. So the fuel tank is on here is not the, the fuel tank I was using um, the first time I operated the bike and I guess actually something I fixed was the piece there's a little wire you can sort of see it that connects the two and that actually broke the first time I rode it that broke in like the first five minutes of me riding around and so I had to rebuild that and my fix for that was a uh, 30 thousandths wire now it's originally had a 60 thousandths wire but that's harder to bend uh, and so far the 30 thousandths wires held up great and so it's also cheaper and so I'm saving myself money and it makes my job easier if that breaks again um, another thing I discovered about the bike is that this is the adjustment for lowering the spindle more down this whole engine water tank mount down onto the wheel now and so I lowered that some because it was slipping so basically it goes up to an idle speed but if you open the throttle it just slips which I'm hoping I fix now that I've lowered the wheel